This is Zach from Schneider Fit, and this video is made to help explain some of the documents that we've been sending out using Google Docs. They are easier to access if you have a Gmail email address, but there are ways to get you these things and get it all worked out. Just let us know if you have any trouble with it. I'm going to start with the coaching agreement first. I sent this out as a can view document, which means that you can't edit these. They're just your copies. We'll be using a, an online uh, service used uh, called DocuSign that we can get electronic signatures on these things and fill them out electronically and have copies of them that way. But they are here for you to go back as a reference. And like I said, if you have trouble accessing these, they can just be printed off and filled out and brought to us. The coaching agreement first. You know, like I said, with DocuSign, we can get electronic information on all this. It's a couple pages, a couple different places to sign. Please read over it. If you have any questions, let us know. The Par Q is next. Really simple. I think there's seven or yes or no questions. Um, if something changes, that's why we give these to you, you know, so you can see them. If something changes with any of your answers in these, it would be important to let us know immediately because it would probably mean that you'd need to see a doctor just to make sure that what we're doing isn't causing any further harm but actually helping. So that's the part Q form. Um, next is goals and guidelines. Now these I sent out as a can edit document, all of them. So you can go in there and actually change these if you want to. The diet guidelines and exercise guidelines, there's no real reason to change those unless you just want to make extra notes. These are just reference sheets and I'll, I'll explain those real quick. With general diet guidelines, it's three pages here. This first page is just you know, things that if you really follow these, you'll it drastically increase your results and your chance of succeeding and reaching your goals. Really simple ideas, but hold true most of the time. Um, and then down here I have, you know, start reading your food labels. I would do that immediately. Very important to know what you're actually eating. Not just the in, new uh, nutritional facts here, but also the ingredients list and you know if you can't pronounce it I don't know what it is and then down here what we have is a sample grocery list so you'll notice on here that all these things well not all of them but mostly all of them are whole foods because that's just how we do things you know it's it's controlling the ingredients um, you know some of these are packaged items almond milk coconut milk kombucha things like I mean a lot of them come in some sort of a package but that's the only ingredient in them um, and that's what we try and stick to. It's the easiest way to do it. And then, you know, creating recipes and finding recipes that incorporate these ingredients that you like. Really easy to follow. Grocery list idea. If you stuck to this list for the next three to six months, it would help a lot. Next is the food and sleep log and the results log are all on here. A little detail here I'll, I'll cue you in on. Okay, so I set up the food log for an entire week, Monday through Sunday, with also some additional questions. It's not about just what you ate, but also, you know, what led to you eating that, if it was a poor decision, how hungry were you. These are all important things to answer at every meal, really, even if you just be, even if this process becomes automated for you, that you don't have to go to a food log for it, but just think about it this way. And then, so it's set up for an entire week, but you can add, you know, just copy this tab and create a new week and keep it going. Um, meal time also very important. So with the sleep log, this is done Monday through Sunday as well. So for just one week, you can copy and create a new one. But this is trying to just give us some insight into your nightly routines, you know, and, and trying to pay attention to how much sleep you're actually getting. And not only that, but the quality of that sleep. It is ideal to get eight hours of sleep, which not many, you know, not a lot of people do, but that is what is, that is what's ideal. Um, so, 
that's what we're shooting for. So maybe we go to bed a little bit earlier, we change some routines so that the quality of our sleep, even if it's less than eight hours, is a higher quality of sleep. You know, what gets measured gets managed, and if you want to sleep better, let's look at how you sleep. And then the result sheet, yeah, what we're here for. Um, I think it's best to do it on Monday morning. It's just you're waking up, you're fresh, your willpower is high, let's do it now. I've only set this up for four weeks. So you do this once a week at about the same time every day of every day in the same day of the week. But you can copy this and create another one for the next month. You know, we're going to go to the body weight, so just weighing yourself on our scale. We have one at the gym if you want to use ours. And then a couple measurements here, which are great indicators of overall health. So... The circumference measurement around the stomach is right at the height of the belly button, and the hips is actually measured at the widest part of the buttocks. So um, you can get a tape measure to do those. There's tons of videos on how to do it. Very simple process and keep track of that. Or we can do it at the gym as well. Um, and then a few questions down here that are important to answer to go along with these things. Really important to answer. I would do this stuff certainly once a week, um, and I'll remind you to do it. It's important to focus in on how you feel and ask yourself if you're achieving the results you want. All these questions are very important. So that's the results sheet. And then lastly, you know, our goals. The goals get us the results if we work towards the goals. So really important. Don't need this back immediately. You can edit this and I can just see it and we can have a discussion about it. There's no need to print this off. Although if you want to do that and keep a copy of it, I would highly recommend that as well. Put it somewhere you see it often. Um, and really take your time with this. Do not rush through it. I want you to be as specific as possible. Follow these right here. So it really quali quantitative goals, you know, stuff we can really measure our progress towards. And so that's easier to make tweaks to the program and get you right where you want to be. So really put a lot of thought into these. This is really what we're here for. This drives the results. So those are all can edit documents. Last on the list is the payment history. Also set up as a can view document, not as a can edit. We'll enter the information that we have and then you can see that. And if there, you know, are there any um, imperfections or, you know, uh, we messed something up, you can let us know or we can go back and check the records on things to fill you in if you don't have access to it, whatever it may be. But this is just a way that we can show you what we have for these things and you can compare it to what you, your record shows so that we're staying on track there. That's can view. We can edit it and you guys can see that. All right, so those are the documents. Coaching agreement in Part Q as a can view, your copies to keep for yourself. The goals and guidelines, that is yours to edit, to change these, to fill these out, and then we can talk about them because we can see these then. We can share these with you. And then the payment history, our current and most up-to-date payment history, and going back to when we all started this in the beginning of September. Um, and then we have supplementary workouts over here at the end. So I also sent these out to everybody, and these fill in the gaps in the training schedule. So your vacation, work trip, um, trainer illness, you know, you're doing a makeup on a weekend, you need something to do because you missed a session during the week, whatever it needs to be to help you remain consistent, and several different ideas. I'll be filling these out as, I, as the program goes on, so you'll have a more robust list. Yeah, you know, do a couple body weight circuits. You can combine them with a cardio circuit of your choice. Just, you know, like I said, take suggestions. Use that to help you remain consistent. Once again, the exercise guidelines repeated here. So you can keep it all in one folder if you wanted to for really easy access. Google Docs does make an app on the phone, which makes all this information really easy to access. Um, but, of course, you can print these out. I have them set up as a can view so I can edit them and make changes. But you could print off these templates if you wanted to um, and do your own thing with them. But I think that's it. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope this cleared up a lot of the questions you may have about the documents that you've been seeing coming through your way. And if it doesn't, just let us know and we can answer any questions you may still have.